What's going on everyone? This is Brian Turner here with another episode of the No Stress Midwest podcast. Uh, we're here in season four with our soccer entrepreneurs. Um, I know the scenery looks a little different. We've kind of switched from doing the Zoom to, to in person. And I think that's what, one of the perks of having a friend and having a podcast guest that is local. Uh, so here we're joined by Ryan Van Gothen, uh, who is with State Soccer. Ryan, how's it going, man? It's going good, man. Excited to be here. Happy to be on the podcast. Yeah, and I'm, I'm happy to have you here. And, you know, we've been chatting a little bit beforehand. I actually feel like this is like the most legit podcast. Like when I picture uh, Joe Rogan when he does his, I feel like <laughs> they have this talk beforehand where they, you know, spin the day together and whatever. We didn't do all that, but it looks a little homey. As you guys can see, we've got some apparel here. Uh, some apparel in the back. Hopefully you all can, can see that. Um, but Ryan, let's kind of talk and, and get into this, right? So talk to me about a young Ryan. How did you get involved with the, the fashion, the sport, clothing? Kind of talk to us about all that. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, you know, growing <coughs> up, I played, I played every sport. Soccer, basketball, baseball, football. wasn't very good at, at, at many of them, but uh, I was always I exceeded the most in basketball. So I kind of quit everything else mm -hmm. and really focused on basketball growing up. Um, was still always a fan of every other sport. Um, growing up, soccer really wasn't my main thing, okay. um, and so I went to University of Kansas to study business, and was always felt kind of lost. You know, when I was in high school and junior high, I was really big into art, like mm -hmm. photography and drawing and you know, growing up, I was always into fashion and style and, and, and having that in relation to sport too, especially right. basketball. And when I went to KU, I was like, you know, in my mind and what I was always kind of taught was like, you got to be in business to make money. And there was always a separation of art and business to make money, which okay. is, you know, okay. I've learned the hard way that that's, that's not anything I want to be doing. Yeah. So, uh, after I graduated from college, <coughs> I, uh, went into technology and I was doing sales, uh, and for a big tech corp and was kind of miserable and always wanted to figure out why and I had an epiphany when I, I knew I wanted to be in design mm -hmm. and I wanted to design products and I wanted to build a brand that's what I'd always that's what I always did for my own personal enjoyment yeah and it kind of took this like click to, to be like man this is what I want to do so okay now I'm um... I'm listening to you talk, I'm hearing your background, I'm getting, I'm really hoping you've seen this show, maybe we've talked about it, How to Make It in America on HBO, yes? I actually have not seen oh, it. Man. I have not, I have not seen it, but oh, I've, been, I've been recommended by many people you, to watch it, so I need to dive in. Yes, it's on Amazon Prime as well. I think that that, that show and kind of you, and maybe it doesn't have the same path, but it's, it's a, a dope show and it's about this guy chasing his dream of starting Think he just wants to sell jeans and then he turned into this like big time fashion designer and then the show stopped very very tragic um cool I'll have to check it out for yeah sure. um, but all right so it's uh the business state soccer what what is state soccer uh we've got a hat here that has your logo um so kind of yeah. talk to us what's the business how did the idea come and uh where did the logo come from just kind of give us a Top level of the business, run it down for us. Okay, cool. I might I might go all, all over the place here with that, but uh, so Stay Soccer is essentially we are an athletic lifestyle brand that is inspired by soccer, and what that means is right now we we build and design products that are uh, for the everyday that are all inspired by the game. Um, we have the line that's split between uh, it's two collections. We have on pitch and off pitch. On pitch being stuff that you would train in work out in, whether you're currently playing, whether you're a high school kid, a college kid, college kid, and you want to be able to have something that connects you to the game while you're in the weight room, or whether you're a businessman in their 30s, used to play soccer, and you still want to find a way to be connected, but you don't want to always wear a soccer jersey. Right, right. So we were trying to find an avenue and, and fill a gap to where you can still be connected to the game, but do it in a, in a, sophistic, a sophisticated way through apparel. And then uh, also trying to build a, a massive platform for the sport here in America where we can mm -hmm. do it through storytelling, clothing, and just really try to help build the culture to, to help with the growth of the sport here stateside. Okay. Uh, where did the name come from? State soccer or states? 
What is it? Where did where did it come from? So the the we you know we went through a, a long naming process about mm-hmm. three hundred names and um, you know with the one we kind of landed on was states and we we liked it because states is just naturally it obviously represents the United States right just in the name and yeah. so our our whole our whole business idea is is to represent the game here played stateside but soccer is the largest international sport right in the world. And so how do we stay connected to that? And, and we saw states as, <clears throat> no one here domestically re- references America as the states. No one. But when you go overseas, they're all like, and you meet people over there, they're like, oh, you're from the states. Yep. So for us, it was a really cool way to represent the game here in America, but then also stay connected to the game internationally. All right. Yeah, I was up in Canada one time, and I remember we were at, at a restaurant or something, and this is just the ignorance of being American. and. They were like, oh yeah, where, where are you all from? We're like, oh, we're from America. And the lady was like, yeah, so so am I. And I was like, huh, guess Canada is still part of <laughs> part of North America, isn't it? I was like, you should. I was like, I'm from the United States. And then I was like, dang, I never, right. you know, I, I never thought of it like that. Um, That's hilarious. Yeah. So I know it definitely <laughs> happens overseas. It happens up in Canada as well. Um, also, I'd like to add, and no, you did not pay me to say this. I can say Ryan did not pay me, but there are clothing items. Uh, they're, they're on pitch short sleeve and they're on pitch long sleeve, I believe, are two of the most comfortable shirts. I wear them all the time. Uh, I didn't wear it today just because I'm on a podcast, but uh, I definitely recommend them. So I've been fortunate enough to, to have a few items that I habitually wear. That's good to hear, man. Uh, and so, I appreciate you saying that. Of course, of course. <laughs> uh, so talk to me about the other people on the team, right? I know it wasn't, or it's not just you there. Uh, who all is there? I know people that are locals in K- KC area will probably recognize some of the people's names that are that are part of it. So what's the team of states? Who's on it? So the, the team was co-founded by four people. Okay. And that was myself, uh, a guy named Daniel Curley. And then Seth Sinovic and Matt Beasler, who both play uh, professionally. Matt's played on the U.S. national team, played in the World Cup, and, and him and Seth played uh, both here locally for uh, Sporting Kansas City, brought a championship to, to that team together, which is a pretty cool story because they played growing up together, and then to bring a championship to, to the hometown together is, is pretty, pretty special. Yeah. And how did you become friends with, with them? You said that soccer wasn't really your – your main sport is more basketball. So, did you did you guys all grow up together? Did you go to the same church? You know what college? What was it? Yeah. Well, I know not college because Ryan uh, Matt was at Notre Dame. Notre Dame. And I don't know where Seth went. But Seth went to Creighton. He Creighton. Played Creighton. Creighton. And then Daniel played at Colgate. Okay. And um, I I did not play. You did not play. Okay. Uh, in college. And so the uh, so Matt. Seth and Daniel all played together growing up. Those okay. three grew up together. They played together. They went to school together. And what high school did Daniel go to? Uh, Daniel went to Rock yeah, Rose, Rock Rose Rock with Seth. With Seth. And, and Matt went to Blue Valley West. Yep. Okay. I went to Olympic East. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and so uh, I actually met Matt through a different friend group. And uh, <clears throat> Matt, Matt's wife and I went to the same school. She was younger than I am. Um, away to the east, and then, uh, but I met Matt through a friend group, and so I kind of had this previous relationship with Beesler. And then, through a business mentorship of a guy by the name of Paul, he, uh, I was kind of talking to him about what I wanted to get into. I'd already kind of been involved with the company, uh, designing products, building bags, and I really wanted to get into apparel. Uh, the guys that I that we did this bag company with, uh, that just kind of fizzled out. And I really wanted to get into product design and branding for uh, apparel. And if there was an idea to be able to do it within a sport, that was ideal for me. Okay. And so as I was kind of talking to my business mentor about that, he had a, uh, a, another guy that he was a mentor, a mentee to him, mm-hmm. Daniel Curley. Mm-hmm. And so he introduced the two of us. And, and Daniel was the one who really knew that there was something going on in soccer, especially in America. And he, knowing Seth and Matt, mm-hmm. um, he's like, we should have a, we should, we should meet together, see yeah. if there's something that we can brew up. And I was like, oh, well, I know, I know Beasley pretty well. Um, so yeah, that'd be, that'd be awesome. So we kind of came together and brainstormed for a long time on what could this look like? Is it apparel? Is it something? But what is, what can we do in, in soccer to make an impact and, and help grow the sport? And 
we really leaned on Matt, uh, Matt's expertise because he was sponsored by Nike at one point. He, uh, you know, played at the highest level. He had seen, yeah. him and Seth both had seen every single training item, every single yeah. jersey, all these things that, they, that you could see as a soccer player in this country um, to then be able to speak to what products can we make. Yeah. And the, the coolest part about that was Matt called it the crossover effect. Where he had a stipend and he'd have to go onto you know Nike's website and he had to cross over into other sports to buy stuff because there wasn't enough offerings that he that he wanted oh, to yeah, purchase. Yeah, and so okay. we spent a weekend in uh, in Matt's basement, kind of going through all these jerseys that he's traded with over mm -hmm. the different countries, also all their training <clears> stuff they were worn, their favorite things they've worn, and we found all these little tidbits that we could be like, all right, let's pull this and then let's create. A clothing line. Yeah. Like uh, a quick example of that is like our short. Uh -huh. um, there were two of the things that he noted most was you know we cut every liner out of every short that we ever that we ever get. Okay. All right. And the other thing is that all there's not enough like dry material that gets made for shorts because he was like we usually swap out shorts at halftime because they're too they're too, too wet they're too heavy. Yeah. yeah. And so which is why we went with the board short material and try to keep the short dry for when you want to play in it or whenever okay. you want to train. So there's every single item we have is pulled from the knowledge yeah. of guys that played at the highest level. That's cool. Are you a student uh, that's struggling a little bit with the hybrid and virtual learning and looking to get just a little more help academically? Or are you a parent that has a child who's struggling to keep that same level of discipline and rigor that they had in the classroom at home? If any of these apply to you, check out No Stress Midwest Education, an academic tutoring service where we offer both in-person and virtual tutoring. One of the things that separates us from others is that all of our tutors are board certified educators in Kansas and Missouri in a variety of specialty topics and familiar with the latest curriculum in school districts around the metro area. We are passionate about helping students achieve their goals in the classroom and also committed to helping students build the necessary skills and tools they will need in the future to succeed on their own. Our team follows the latest guidelines from the CDC. We require masks for all in-person tutoring to protect both the student and the tutor. Our tutors will either travel to your home or meet at a predetermined location to conduct all in-person tutoring sessions. All we need is a space for learning, and we're ready to go. At No Stress Midwest, we truly believe in developing the well-rounded student athlete. No Stress Midwest does not tell you what to think, but teaches you how to think. No Stress Midwest Education, an academic tutoring service. For more information, visit www.nostressmidwest.com backslash education. I am. Um, I'm a big fan, and you talked about how you have the on pitch and the off pitch, right? Because I think uh, a lot of the times the clothing items made by the Adidas, the Nikes, uh, for soccer, really, I think you know those are going to be the main two, right? Puma's kind of getting into it now. A lot of the stuff is the same, or it's more catered towards. I feel like Nike is more catered towards basketball. Um, so to be able to create clothing items for soccer players that you can wear to the airport or you can wear around the house or to run your errands, I think is, is a good idea. Um, all right, so what is, what's kind of the goal, ultimate goal for states? Um, we see the level it's at now. I know you guys had a pop-up shop in the plaza um, for yeah. a little bit, I think earlier this year, end of last year. was yeah, the, the holiday season of 2020. Holiday, sorry, yep, that's right, yeah, holiday of 2020, and I know I, I wore a hoodie that, that I got from you to one of my training sessions with my college kids, and a kid pulled up wearing the same one, and he was like, hey, how did you find their store, and I was like, oh, I, I know one of the owners of it, and he was like, dude, I was walking by their store in the plaza, and it was the coolest thing ever, that's awesome. uh, so I thought that was like, I was like, dang, look at that, you know, that, that was really cool that's to cool. see. That's cool to see. Um, so what, what's your goal, your ultimate goal with it, right? I know that I've been creeping on your Instagram prior to you coming here. There's been some hints of new things coming out. You got the new training hats that are here. Yep. What, what, what do we got in store? So the, the ultimate goal for us is to be the, you know, like our, our 
not really a motto, but our goal phrase is that we want to be a leading lifestyle brand to represent soccer in America. You know, you have the Nikes and the other brands and, and Adidas and Puma that, that really focus on soccer as the largest international sport. But I, I think there's a unique space to be able to focus on it here in America mm -hmm. and, and really tell the stories of American players, Ameri you know, like the game here and its growth because naturally it's a little bit further behind than, than the rest of the world. And yeah. so we want to be the voice <clears throat> to help show how awesome the sport is here in America. And and the growth of it and how cool that part is as well. So like that's kind of the platform we're trying to reach, whether it's through clothing, whether it's through storytelling, mm -hmm. you know, just trying to be involved um, in every way that we can as our, you know, one of our brand pillars is soccer, soccer, soccer. And I think that's what separates us a little bit is you have, you have all these brands that are coming out, right? That are like athletic apparel brands. Yeah. And they're just kind of general, yeah. which is which is great. And they're, 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 their focus is to make clothes you can work out in or stuff like that but it's you know there's so many things you can do with that and a lot of them try to cross over but it's not really that natural where we're trying to be solely dialed on soccer on soccer there's no Everything, mistake right like when you see our clothes there's no oh does he play lacrosse does he play basketball it's soccer you see right. or, or our, maybe they didn't play it but that's the look that they're going for. Right, like it's our sole focus is to give people a way to be connected to the game through our brand. Yeah. So it's, it's purely soccer. Well, and I know it's even down to, on the, the sleeve, you have the, um, I, I think in the earlier versions, it's just the like uh, stitched right here over the captain's arm, maybe. Yep. And then I think in the long sleeve one has states on, on there. Maybe I have, yeah, long sleeve one has the states there. So. What's the, why do you have that there? That is, so that's kind of a way to show like how we can be a little bit different than like wearing a soccer jersey to represent the game, right? So our, we wanted to have, you know, we wanted to pay attention to all the details. And so we wanted to make really great products that are honestly worn away from the pitch. Mm -hmm. But what, are, what is a really cool, well-designed, subtle way just to represent the game? And, you know, the, the coolest thing on the soccer field, you know, when you're a kid, when you're growing up, you want to be able to wear that captain's band. Yep. There's something about the captain's band that, that not only is like something that you, it's a great goal to reach to be able to be a captain, but it just looks cool. That, 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 that band on the arm, it just yeah. looks badass. So we wanted to find a way to be able to kind of, we thought that was a cool, subtle way to like, you don't really know what that means. And even if you don't know what it is for soccer, it still looks cool. But mm -hmm. then once you realize, oh, that's the captain's armband. Then you're kind of like it'd make that connection to be like, oh, that's cool. That's yep, I dig it. Um, let's see. So, how can people purchase items? Right, I I have seen. I know I, I've gone to your website, so I know that. Do you have a store yet? Is there one coming up? What's the is it on the website that we have to get it? Kind of tell us how do we get and purchase items. So right now, uh, so in terms of retail space, what we've done is uh, we've been we've been seeing a lot of success in, success in the way we do pop ups. Um, you know, especially in the Kansas City market, which is where we're established, is it's been fun to test different spots in the, in the area. Um, and being that we're a brand new company, we still have our first collection. We want to be able to introduce the brand to other people. You know, we started out wanting to have a you know a full line, and by doing that, we had to kind of start with neutral colors and be able to split. Our, our materials and our fabric across a couple different items. Yeah. So if you look at our if you look at our stuff online, you have a lot of like neutral colors, which is hard to really separate. What does this material look and feel like? What is right. what are the, yeah. what are the yeah. technical functionalities that that these that these products provide? Yeah. So it's fun to get these different areas to really show that people get their hands on it, feel how soft it is, and, and try it on. Um, so right now we can uh, we're, we're looking at doing a pop up in Austin, Texas. Which okay. for us is natural because Matt's now down in Austin yeah. and just, uh, you know, Austin FC is having their inaugural season. Mm -hmm. The buzz down there for soccer is, is, is pretty electric. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at doing a pop-up down there in November through December for the holiday season. Okay. And then you can always get our products online uh, at www.states.soccer. There's no .com. States.soccer, okay. But we, we, we hope to continue to keep doing pop-ups and test the market. We, we hope to maybe one one day soon do a, maybe like a national tour uh, around a lot of major markets. Mm -hmm. And then uh, our ultimate dream yeah, is- Yeah, big picture. You, big, you're looking back on it and yeah. your feet are finally kicked up when you can say, we did it. Why, what, what, what's the business looking like then? 
We uh, will always be online. Mm -hmm. You know, we feel like e-commerce is kind of where the world's going in terms of buying products, but we want to be more than just a retail experience. Uh, you know, going back to our brand pillars being soccer, 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 and helping to build that culture, we want to be able to provide an experience for people who love the game that's way more than just buying a shirt. So our, our goal would be to have uh, our retail experience be like a pub slash coffee shop slash retail space. Where you, okay. can, you can clearly yeah. buy our products there, but yeah. we really want to be able to provide a space that people who love the game can, can come at seven o'clock in the morning and get a cup of coffee when they want to watch an international game. Right. And then, you know, have a couple local coffee places provide coffee and then yeah. have um, you know, local beers on tap Beer, for yeah, games later yeah. at night, stuff like that, and be able to have games all the time. It really just be this ultimate space for fans to game people to come and enjoy the game on every level and be able to do that in, in, a, in a few different other locations uh, around the country and really provide that experience that's yeah. way more than just buying, buying a product. I dig it. I, I think that's huge. And I, I think Austin, I've heard, I've never been there, but I've heard Austin is a great, not up and coming city, but like tech city, one of the big, small cities, kind of like how Kansas City is, not in the ranks of LA or DC or New York or anything like that, but that next realm, I've heard Austin's a, a really cool area. Yeah. Um, and I think having a place, we were kind of talking about it earlier when we were talking about my indoor facility and kind of how I wanted it to, to be, is you want to create a space that people don't want to leave from. Right, so whether right. you're up at 7 a.m. drinking coffee or up at 7 a.m. throwing back a pint, you know, you're, you're, you, you're there and you've got the game on, people are gonna naturally buy stuff, especially the more they drink. So I think having a store connected is genius. Right. Probably goal specials or something like that. If you're there to watch a goal, you get a discount <laughs> or something. Um, For sure. But I, I, think that's, I think that's a cool idea. I'm, I'm excited to see it grow. And, I think what's cool about your business is that it's not tied to one area in the country. It's tied to the whole, you know, United States. So whether it's in Austin or whether it's in Philly or whether it's in, you know, maybe there's a market in Wyoming. I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but regardless of where it is, right. it's the whole state. So yeah. or the whole state. So I, I think that's that's good. A lot of room for growth. Um, so what's some business advice? It's a two-part question, all right? So what's some okay. business advice that you wish you would have received early on? Um, and before, just for the, the listeners, before Ryan answers, uh, Ryan is similar to me where he was in corporate America and he was doing that and then working on states. And since him and I being friends, he's made that transition to fully go into full entrepreneurship, he's all into states, it's, it's this or nothing. Um, so I think that that's something that, that shows the dedication and the belief, right? And I like to say it's not stubbornness, that it's really gonna work. Um, <laughs> right. So you've made that jump, you're in this, right? So what is, you know, maybe some advice you wish you'd have received a year ago, or when you and, and Daniel first met initially to kind of talk about this clothing uh, business. Uh, you know, it's hard, that's a hard question to answer in um, the first part, right? Like, what what advice would I wish I would have received? I think I could probably better answer that, like, okay. in three years, okay? Because uh, I'm still learning so much, right? So, like, I guess the best thing I can say is get involved. Whoever you're going to go into business with, get involved with the right people. Uh, you know, I'm much more versed on the creative side and the vision of where the brand can go. And I was lucky enough to be partnered with Daniel through my, my mentor. And Daniel is an incredibly intelligent businessman in terms of numbers and uh, knowing how to build a business from the ground up and knowing how to do it the right way and knowing how to negotiate certain deals. So like getting involved with the right people, right? Like I yeah. think our blend of, you know, we had an idea and you can, there's so many ideas that can come up. And it's like, do you have the right people to execute it? And, you know, someone, and there's probably a million athletes that go out and try to start a clothing brand. Yeah. But they don't know anything about clothes, right? Yep. They're just, they're, 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 they're that athlete, but they don't know how to necessarily go find a factory or, yeah. you know, there's, there's all these different things that they can, that, that can happen. But like through having this partnership with Matt and Seth, it was cool because they brought the soccer knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. And then I got to look at 
their, I got to look and hear from their knowledge of the game, then look at it from a different creative perspective. Yeah. And that blend has really allowed us to build, you know, I'm biased, but to build the beautiful branding that we have, the beautiful website, and like look at and look at soccer clothes. from this aesthetic perspective, and, and then build a brand behind it. So we have the right people. That would be the first advice that I would, you know, make sure that I lucky. I just got I got I got lucky in that. Right. Part. Well, and, and I think you brought up a very good point, and and this is something that I'm still kind of looking for right you said if you're the the artsy guy you're the the vision when it comes to being the creative person that's you but when it comes to analyzing what people like in a soccer jersey that's not you but you had people where that was them and you didn't have to have matt or seth try to creatively see these jerseys and pick out this and that and the hem and the cut and because I'm sure to them, they probably would have been like, dude, I don't, I don't know. It, it, it all looks the same to me. So by, and then having right. Daniel, who then has the business side of it, right, where he can then focus on that. And he doesn't, you know, even though he played, he hasn't, you know, maybe have the expertise in all of the jerseys and all that stuff and doesn't have the creative in mind that you have. So it's like each of you have found the pillars that you need to create a successful business and you're all kind of working and peeling off of each other, which is, is dope. Um, right. Lucky, well, I'm not gonna say lucky because I don't believe in luck. I just think it's an opportunity meets preparation. Um, for sure. But I, I think that's something I'm looking for myself, right? Because I'm the soccer person. I'm not really a business person per se, but it's, if I don't figure it out, no one else is gonna do it, right? So I'm like, all right, I gotta learn how to do finances. And I got to learn how to do marketing and right. I got to learn how to do this. Um, so I think that that's, that's awesome how you're able to have all these different avenues or all these different parts of the puzzle to then kind of push forward. And I think it shows with how awesome, not, you know, not just the website, but the storybook design. I think that's a forbidden thing or not forbidden, but a lost art. Uh, you don't really see storybooks in my opinion. And, I'm not in the fashion world, but from a non-fashion person, right. I know specific brands that put those out where I'm like, if I walk into their store, I'm gonna see it. Right. Um, so I, I like that and, and you know, the clothing, it, it shows that you guys have thought it all out, so. so and then to piggyback onto that real quick, mm -hmm. what I forget is like, in terms of doing things with the right people and getting the right people involved and then, you know, now, I didn't mention it in the co-founders part, but you know, while we were building our brand, we, were, we worked with a branding team that was out of New York. And you know, a lot of that process is send us imagery, send us things that, uh, uh, that are gonna be the look and feel of the kind of brand you want to build. Okay. And I found myself, I found this guy on Instagram and all of his photography was just unreal. Mm -hmm. And I found myself pulling a lot of his images and being and sending those to our branding team. I was like, you know what, this dude's local. His name's Steven Shireman. And so I'm like, I'm just gonna hit him up and see if he wants to be involved um, from a photography standpoint. Yeah. And met with Steven and, and he's who I work on the company the most with now and, and he's gotten involved and I gotta learn a lot about his expertise. He has an architect degree from uh, the University of Kansas and so he brings a lot more to the table than just photography and yeah. he's now become our creative director. He's involved with the clothing, he's involved with the storybook, he's involved with the brand. Like, the brand wouldn't be what we are without him, mm -hmm. and he came in after the fact. But, like, we wouldn't look the way we look without Stephen. Like, if you look at our Instagram, our Instagram's beautiful, the photography's yeah. beautiful, it shows the sport the way we want to do it. And, yeah. and Stephen's been a huge help with that. And um, not just photography, like, what we're doing with the, our collections. The whole, the whole big picture. Yeah. 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 Well, and I, like I said, I've stalked your, your Instagram page. I don't even know how to say I stalk it. I actually just am a fan of it, so I follow <laughs> it. Um, but how I like how you all do a good job of getting, at first it was just the Kansas City, the sporting KC players. Now we have Casey Woso here. You started getting some of those ladies in on, on the pictures. Um, so I like the, the, not the imagery, but how you're staying local here and, and keeping that connection with, the professional sports here. Um, now the kind of two part, the first question we asked about the business advice. Um, what advice would you give to a new entrepreneur? And, and I know you kind of mentioned in the last part that 
you still are kind of new in it, so you don't feel comfortable or maybe you don't know what you would say. Uh, but I think this is, regardless of how long you're in it, you've gone through an experience that someone maybe is going through or might go through. Uh, so what would you what would you say? What advice to, to a new entrepreneur? Are you ready to take your game to the next level? Trust the process and sign up for No Stress Midwest training today at www.nostressmidwest.com slash training. No Stress Midwest primarily offers training for soccer players on the individual, group, and team settings of all ages and skill sets. Our training is customized for the player, and our goal in doing that is to continue to grow the love of the game, build a personal desire to want to develop, and create the chance and choice for the player to play at the next level. We have developed a unique solution here at No Stress Midwest Training, showing our clients that you can have fun while still getting better. By creating a unique training environment customized to the player, we feel that not only are we able to get the most out of the individual by creating a no stress environment, but we are also teaching them fundamentals that they can carry off the field and apply in their everyday life. Visit our website at www.nostressmidwest.com backslash training and sign up for your first session today. Uh, so that would do two. I'll, and I'll, the first one will be quick because no matter what you, no matter what advice you give here, people are going to do this on their own pace. But it's just obvious that if you're going to do something, go full in. Yeah. It took me. You know, I, I was started. We started. The idea of states, I think, started in 2016 before we launched in 2018, and we worked on it, building the brand, building the products. And so I stayed in corporate America for so long, being like, I'm going to wait for this opportune moment where everything, where everything just gels yeah. perfectly. I'm going to start getting paid for building this business and mm -hmm. you wait so long but at the end of the day all you're doing is hindering yourself with time because obviously time is the best currency yep. and <clears throat> so there's I, that's one thing that I, I would say do it full time as soon as you put as soon as you possibly can and that's actually even the, the worst way to say it just do it full time immediately because right. there's never going to be this this best time to do it right and then and then secondly is you know the thing that I've learned the most with entrepreneurship is is staying neutral in your in your mind frame mm -hmm. because there's tons of highs there's tons of lows and if you get too high and, and make yourself too excited it'll bring you back down to reality real quick and that it can send that in and that low. fall that falls <laughs> can be <laughs> yeah that's all be super deflating yes yeah and yes. you're gonna be you know there's so many cliches when you talk about this stuff yeah. but it's like and there's so many lows that can happen that can send you just to you know spiraling, spiraling yeah, down and, yeah. and it's the only way you can keep really pushing forward in, in the most intelligent way and, and the most sound way is to just stay neutral yeah. don't get too excited don't get too low and just build continue to build and continue to push forward and and, and stay neutral yeah I think we've got my puppy Aria jumping up here a bit um, She's a sweet she mom. likes the attention so it's not surprising <laughs> um, but you, you bring up a good point, the, the staying neutral, right? And, and I have adopted that in a business mindset, but also in a coaching mindset, right? Oh, and and I, I look at it as a coach. I, can't, I don't control what's going on in the field, right? I can prep and do all this stuff, but it's 11 you know, people that are doing everything else and all this other stuff going on. So I can remember getting so excited when we would score goals, right? And then there'd be times where we'd give up five goals and I'm just like, ah, like, well, you know, what's going on? And I would see how much, like, I just didn't enjoy that feeling of my emotions just, boom, like, I've been up by three goals and then lost by two goals in the same game. And I'm like, my emotions aren't, aren't booked for this. So I found myself, regardless of who scores, we score, they score, I'm just, okay, the score is one zero now, or the score is two one, or the score is whatever. What's the next play? Right. Um, because that's what helps me get through not just the eighty minute game, but a full season consistently, right back to back. And then on the business side, you talked about it. We, you know, you can have those highs where someone's like, "Yo, we want to invest in you and, and give you all of this," or you get this big deal with whoever, or someone agrees, whatever the thing is that you're just like. 
finally, this is turning out to be okay. I'm going to go out tonight. I'm going to celebrate. Boom, boom, boom. And then <laughs> right. the next day they cancel on you, right? right? Or the next day, you know, your inventory goes up in smokes or whatever it is. And you're just like, dude, I can't catch a break here, right? So to be able to just like, hey, it's all part. To me, it's just riding the wave, right? There's the ups, there's the downs. But uh, we talked about it earlier, as long as you keep going. Right. I think that's what's the most important thing. And I think the most efficient way, at least that I've seen, is to, like you said, be neutral and just keep riding the wave. Like, take the highs. Anytime something good happens, I give myself 12 hours uh, to enjoy that moment. So basically, I enjoy it for the rest of the day. And then when I wake up the next day, then it's all right, that's done with, time to move on. If it's something bad, 12 hours, right? As soon as I wake up, I'm like, it's a new day, I move on, that's in the past. I can think about how to move on from it and, and go from there. Yeah, I love that. It's, uh, you know, you celebrate the wins, learn from the failures, but don't, don't take them too high. Too much of anything isn't good. The best, you know, the best advice that I just thought of this was, and I can't take credit for this one, but the from the, the NBA Finals, mm -hmm. the, I saw a clip from the Suns head coach where he was talking about after they went, after they lost game four, I think. Okay. He was talking to the team, and he was like, you know, this is this is where it's at. This is what you work for, and, and he goes, and everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of hard. Mm -hmm. And that right there, that, that to me, that's might be my next tattoo that I ever get. You know, like that is, that couldn't be more true. Like yeah. everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of heart. So like, you gotta work for it yep. and keep working towards that. Even when you have the wins, even when you have the lows, like keep pushing forward because yeah. it's never gonna be easy. No, and, and if it is, you don't want it. Right. Right, you know, I, I love, I love the journey of being an entrepreneur um, in a big picture sense. If you look at it small picture, like it can it can mess with you, right? The constant think anxiety or stresses of this, that, and all this other stuff, right? That can be a lot. But the big picture I love is because every day I wake up, I get to go and do what I love to do. And if I'm not there yet, I get to work to get there. And then when I get there, I'm like, you know, damn, <laughs> I work to I work to get there. Right. What's the next thing I can work to do? And that feeling to me becomes addicting, you know, success. Like you achieve something, you see what hard work does, you achieve it, you're like, okay, well, if it worked this time, what's the next thing? How, how do I apply it to the next thing? Right, um, right. And you just keep growing, you know? And there's there's a balance between that too, is the balance of what do I have to get done today? Yeah. In the business today. Yep. And then there's a, and, then, and balancing that between what is this big picture? Yeah, that, that can be super that's sexy. So, yeah, that's but a you good point. you have to be able to yep. bring that in to be like, yep, if one requires the other. Yeah, that's a very that's a very good point, and, and maybe you can attest to it. I've definitely forgot to eat some days because I have just been so caught up. And I'm like, all right, let me finish this, and then I'll go grab a bite to eat, and then you get started on something else, and then next thing I know, it's been like four o'clock, and I'm just like, holy smoke! <laughs> right. But I still got this, you know, I got this to do, and and that uh, being able to suffice and say, hey, this just needs to get done today, sleep, enjoy being a human being, get to the rest tomorrow or, or the next day. Right, right. Um, so, all right, Ryan, do you have any anything else you wanna add? Any any maybe future plans that, that's coming, future products, exclusives? Uh, is Matt Beasler wearing this during his warmups in Austin? Anything you want to add before we uh, wrap things up? <laughs> well, you know, unfortunately, Matt's not wearing it during his, uh, his, his warm-ups because, you know, the, the MLS is sponsored by Adidas and therefore every team is sponsored by Adidas. But okay. Matt is our first sponsored athlete. Okay. Um, and we have hopes to be able to capture other athletes and influencers that are, that are heavily involved in soccer from a, a playing perspective and, what and about other coaches, perspectives. Coaches as well? Yeah, if it makes I've been, sense. I've been, I'm, I'm working on my sales pitch for you guys. There we so go. We'll there we go. There. Maybe it'll be our first coach that we sponsor. Like um, that. So you know, we're looking at <coughs> Avenue as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously we're we're away from actual being in an actual like MLS game, but there's yeah. other avenues that we can still get in, involved on the playing side as well. You know, we're doing we have a partnership with Challenger that does a ton of youth camps, youth jerseys, youth teams. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hoping to get involved on the teamwear side on, on the youth level and club team level. 
and um, as we build that out and then we also have our first unisex collection coming out that's going to be true off pitch and it's going to introduce state soccer club oh okay uh okay. Which, is, which is brand new and you know right now we everything we have is on it's, it's on pitch off pitch um it's still a little bit athletic this is going to be more of like a sweat collection and t-shirt collection oh okay that okay. is going to be uh way more on the lifestyle side and, yeah and kind of the, the push behind the brand of it is going to be, you know, that soccer is, it's a club. We're going to call it State Soccer Club, but mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's not exclusive. It's yeah. inclusive. Soccer is the most inclusive sport in the world. Okay. And so we want it to be for everybody. So, so sweats. Are we going to sweat suits? The, yep. Oh, boy. All right. I'm excited for that. Yeah, we're excited about it, too. We can't wait. So it'll be our first thing that we'll have that a lot of women buy our clothes now. Yeah. But it's going to be our first thing that is, like, full-blown unisex where youth, women, and men can, yeah. can purchase the products. So, uh, you mentioned Challenger Sports that you've got a, a partnership with them. So, yep. for the podcast guests, the ones that have been following us this season, uh, one episode we had Peter Arch, who's now with Jim Shark, but he was one of the co-founders of Challenger Sports um, and left a few. I can't remember how many years ago, but since left, and he's with Jim Shark now. But yeah. he talked about uh, talked about his time with Challenger and getting it started with with guys that are still in the Kansas City soccer picture. Uh, so that was that was pretty cool to kind of hear how it got it in, in infancy back like before I was even right. born. Um, so all right, Ryan, that's uh I mean, that's all I've got, man. This is this has been fun. It's Absolutely. Been like a round table talk. It's a legit round table. The microphone didn't start off working, but we <laughs> sorted it out. We've got a nice little setup here in the back. I'm going to move the laptop down, so maybe if you can't see it, you can get a better view here. Um, but Ryan, if that's all, man, I want to thank you for, for being a guest. Uh, it's been fun. The clothes, you guys, make sure you check out their store. I'll add their uh, their website on the bottom. Um but man, check their stuff out. I'm a huge fan. This has been fun, Ryan. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure chatting with you. And this is fun. It's my first podcast. So, hey, cheers to Excited. the next one. All right, cheers. Take care. And uh, thank you for listening. We'll see you on the next episode of the No Stress Midwest podcast.